Once again, we would like to invite you to our series of Bible study for the home. This is lesson number three. And in this lesson, we are looking at uh, meekness and uh, humility. Meekness and uh, humility. Let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father, our God in heaven, I thank you so much that you never get tired of hearing from us. And Father, you have given us the word of life. And, uh, but because of our carnal nature, it, uh, it is impossible for us to understand uh, these words on our own. So we pray that you would send us your spirit, your Holy Spirit, to enable us to understand uh, uh, what we are about to study together. May Jesus be lifted up. In his name we pray. Amen. Let's go to the book of uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 29. Proverbs uh, chapter 29. Notice with me what the prophet Solomon, King Solomon, wise man Solomon, says here in uh, Proverbs chapter 29. Again, our subject for today is meekness and uh, humility. Proverbs 29 verse 23. And the Bible says, A man's pride shall bring him uh, low. A man's pride. What will bring a man low? His pride. But, notice now, honor shall uphold the humble in uh, spirit. So honor shall humble, shall uphold the humble in spirit. So we see pride, we see humble. The, these two words are the, on the opposite of uh, each other, which reminds me of Philippians, Philippians chapter 2. In Philippians chapter 2, we see the mind of Christ and the admonition there, the counsel that the Apostle Paul gave us in Philippians chapter 2. If, uh, if we want to be on the right path, if we want to make sure that we are following Jesus, notice the counsel there beginning in verse 5 of Philippians chapter 2. Let this mind, the Apostle Paul says, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Why? Who, being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God. So whose mind do we need? The mind of Christ. Why? Because Jesus was God. But when he came to this world, he lay aside his divinity and he became a, not only human, but he became a servant. And the word servant there that we find in verse 7 is slave. Let's read that. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of a of man, in the likeness of men. Now keep in mind the expression in the likeness of men there. It, this is referring to the, uh, Jesus took upon himself humanity 4,000 years after uh, the fall of man. So now you can imagine this, this is not uh, the Adam before the fall. This is Adam after the fall, after the human race has became so corrupt, that's when the Son of Man came and uh, came down low and became human. Notice now, then it says in verse 8, uh, says, And being found in fashion as a man, what did he do? He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The word even there, emphasis, the word even there means the uh, even, then whatever follows, the death of the cross, that represents uh, the worst way to die. He died as a criminal. But uh, as a result of him doing this, what happened uh, as a result of him humbling himself? What happened? What did God do? Wherefore, the Bible says, God ha also have highly exalted him. And uh, what else? And given him a name which is above uh, every name. So as we have... Uh, the mind of Christ, and we uh, endure humiliation, shame, whatever it is that men might do unto us, and uh, what God allows to come our way. If we endure till the end, we humble ourselves. God, like He gave uh, Jesus a name above every name, and He highly exalted Him, God will do like Christ for you and for me. Notice with me what desire of ages 
330 says, it says, we are to enter the school of Christ. For what reason? To learn from Him meekness and lowliness. Redemption is that process by which the soul is trained for heaven. This training, notice now, means a knowledge of Christ. So, meaning the mind of Christ. It means emancipation from ideas, habits, and practices that have been gained in the school of the Prince of Darkness. The soul must be, notice, the soul must be delivered from all that is opposed to loyalty to God. And how will the soul, how will my soul, how will your soul be delivered from uh, the snare of Satan, from all of these things? Through humility, humbling our, ourselves. Notice with me. Let's go to the book of uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, we're looking at... Uh, the Sermon on the, the Mount, what promise is made to the meek, those who choose to humble themselves? What promise did Christ give to them, to you and I? The Bible says in verse 5 of Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are the meek. Why? What would happen to the meek, to the humble? It says, For they shall inherit the earth. Who will inherit the earth? The meek. Amen. The meek shall inherit the earth. We're living in a world today where people are, uh, many people are pursuing wealth, riches, playing the lottery because they want a lot of money, big mansion. Uh, they, they, they want to become famous. But those who humble themselves are the ones who are going to inherit something uh, that has substance, that will never be destroyed or be taken away from them. Notice, uh, let's look at another passage here. Now keep in mind, also, the Greek word for um, meekness, or uh, it means uh, gentleness, humble, considerate. That's another word there, it means considerate. Let's go to the book of uh, Matthew. Well, still in Matthew, but this time chapter 11. Look with me in uh, Matthew chapter 11. Which book are you going to? Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, uh, and uh, the Bible says, again, Jesus is talking. Notice now, He says uh, in verse uh, 28 of Matthew chapter 11, Come unto me, He says, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will do what? And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon uh, you, and uh, what, what uh, must you do? And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, in heart, and ye shall find rest unto, unto your souls. So Jesus said he is meek and how? Lowly. This was the, the uh, king of kings, lord of lords. But yet he says he was meek and lowly in, in heart. Now notice, let, uh, Jesus says to take his yoke upon, upon us, to learn of, uh, of him. And that's his mind, the mind of Christ, to, be, to humble ourselves before him. Go to the book of Numbers with me. Go to the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 12. Notice with me in the book of Numbers uh, chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. In Numbers chapter 12, we're looking at uh, the, the um, mind of, uh, of Moses or the character of Moses. But before we, we, we go there, before we go to Numbers chapter 12, Look with me what it says there on, on the screen. It says, The simplicity, the self-forgetfulness, and the confining love of a little child are the attributes that heaven values. These are the characteristics of real greatness. Solomon was never so rich or so wise or so truly great as when he confessed I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. Likewise, as we turn to the book of Numbers, the book of Numbers chapter 12, Solomon was uh, exercised meekness, humility there, when he asked for wisdom. Notice now, in the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 12, and uh, the Bible says uh, in Numbers chapter 12, speaking of uh, Moses, it says, Now, the man Moses, Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. Now, the man Moses 
was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Here's what I want you to keep in mind here. Who wrote the book of Numbers? Who wrote the book of Numbers? Moses. It was Moses. Moses wrote the book of Numbers. But what did Moses say here? Notice it's once again. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Now this was Moses writing this. Because Moses wrote the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and also the book of Job. But who inspired Moses to write this? Was Moses uh, puffing himself up? No, it was God's Spirit that inspired Moses to write these books, including what Moses put there. Was Moses uh, meek? Was he a humble person? Yes, to be leading Thousands of people, when the majority of them were in rebellion yet to exercise patience, long-suffering, meekness. Yes, he was in his generation. Notice uh, also uh, from the screen here what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here from Thoughts of, from Mount of Blessing, page 14. It says, Jesus places meekness among the first qualifications for his kingdom in his own life. And character, the divine beauty of His precious grace is revealed. Jesus, the brightness of the Father's glory, thought it not a thing to be grasped, to be on an equality with God, but emptied Himself, taking the form of a servant. Though all the lowly experiences of life, He consented to pass, walking among the children of men, not as a king to demand homage, but as one whose mission it was to serve others. There was in his manner no taint of bigotry, no cold austerity. The world's Redeemer had a greater than angelic nature, yet, notice now, united with his divine majesty were meekness and a humility that attracted all to himself. So according to Sister White here, what attracted uh, the people to Jesus? It was uh, meekness uh, and uh, humility. Let's go to the book of Galatians with me. Galatians chapter 5. Go to the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Uh, and uh, notice with me in Galatians chapter 5, uh, we're looking at uh, verse uh, 22 and, and, uh, and verse 23. Galatians chapter 5. Of what is meekness of fruit? Notice now. Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse uh, 22. It says, uh, notice, but the fruit. What is fruit there? That is character. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, what else? Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, and verse 23, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So what is included here in the fruit of the Spirit? Meekness. And uh, notice with me, meekness, exercising meekness or humility, that is the mind of Christ. Because uh, we just read in Philippians chapter 2 that uh, how he humbled himself. And we read in the gospel uh, the mistreatments that he received, the false accusations, but yet he humbled himself through it all. And we also read from the gospels that uh, they tried to uh, cause him to retaliate, but not once. As he was being mistreated, did he retaliate? And that is a lesson for you and I. By nature, what uh, do we do when uh, we feel threatened, when somebody uh, cross us, when somebody says something unkind, mean to us? We want to go and uh, talk back or fight back or even go into others and talk about this person. But what should be our attitude? Remember, which kingdom that we want to inherit? Is it uh, this earthly kingdom, which by the way, is going to pass away? Or the kingdom 
that will never end or the new earth because that's the kingdom the new earth that is that jesus says the meek will inherit that's the kingdom we should look forward to we are living in the last days the people of god as a, the, a people of god we're gonna suffer martyrdom we're gonna be falsely accused what christ went through that's what you and i will will experience in these last days shame humiliation false accusation but should we retaliate no through it all there are times when we have to humble ourselves and say nothing and just allow people to talk about us to say all kinds of uh, false things about us just humble ourselves let god vindicate our character amen notice with me so again meekness is one of the fruit uh, of the spirit let's look at a couple more verses here with whom does god dwell that's a very good question with whom will god dwell in heaven and in the new earth let's go to the book of isaiah isaiah chapter 57 we're going to the book of isaiah chapter 57 notice with me again the question was and is with whom does god dwell or with whom will God dwell? Dwell there means live with. Amen. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. The word became flesh and dwell among us. And uh, this will find its complete fulfish, uh, uh, fulfillment uh, when uh, Christ comes again the second time and the third time and make all things new. The, when he comes the second time, uh, we will dwell with him in heaven for a thousand years. When he comes again the third time with us, he will recreate the earth and we will shall ever be with the Lord. But whom will he dwell with? Notice with me in Isaiah, with me, chapter 57, verse 15. Isaiah chapter 57. Notice, very, very important passage here. The Bible says, For thus saith the high and lofty one, that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is what? Is holy. Notice now, I, what's the word? Dwell in the high and holy place. With whom? With him also, that is of what? Of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the who? Of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Again, whom? There's a God with whom does God dwell, whom God will uh, allow to come, to live. As Jesus says in John 14, 1, 2, 3, that he went to, put, to uh, uh, make a mansion or build a mansion to prepare a place for us. Who will dwell in these uh, mansions, in these places? The meek, the humble. God will dwell with them. Another passage here. Whom God has God promised to guide in judgment? Notice now. We're going to the book of Psalm. Psalm chapter 25. Go backward with me in your Bible. To the book of Psalm chapter 25. Psalm chapter 25. Verse 29. The question is. Whom has God promised to guide in the judgment? Notice now. Psalm chapter 25. Are, are you there with me? It says here. In verse uh, 7, and the Bible says, uh, well, let's begin in uh, verse 6. It says, uh, the psalmist says in Psalm chapter 25, verse 6, Remember, O Lord, uh, thy tender mercies and thy loving uh, kindness, for they have been uh, ever of old. Remember not the what? The sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me. For thy goodness sake, O Lord, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, will he teach sinners in the way. Notice now, the meek will he guide. Where? In judgment. And the meek will he teach his way. The meek will he guide where? In judgment. What comes to mind as you hear the word judgment? What comes to mind? The day of atonement. Are we living in the anti-typical day of atonement? Yes, it means judgment. So whom will guide, God lead 
to judgment, to, to vindicate the meek, the humble, those who would have the mind of Christ. That's the one that Christ will represent. These are the ones that Christ will be their advocate. I want Christ to be my advocate. I want to have his mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, the Bible says. Let's uh, quote this passage again uh, from Thought from Mount of uh, Blessings as we close. Page, uh, one, uh, uh, page 14, it says once again, uh, Jesus places meekness among the first, uh, notice now, among the first qualification for his kingdom. He, in his own life and uh, character, the divine beauty of his precious grace is revealed. Jesus, the brightness of the Father's glory, thought it not a thing to be grasped to be on in uh, equality with God, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. Though all the lowly experiences of life, he consented to pass, walking among the children of men, not as a king to demand homage, but as one whose mission it was to serve others. There was in his manner no taint of bigotry, nor cold austerity. The world's Redeemer had a greater than angelic nature, yet united with His divine majesty were meekness and humility that attracted all to Himself. So, in order to attract many to Jesus Christ, we must exercise meekness and humility. So let's have the mind of Christ. Let's pray. Loving Father which art in heaven, we thank you for the example that your Son has shown unto us, for the sacrifice that he had made. Again, as we've been told, we can never fully comprehend it. But from the little bit that we know, we pray that you would impress them upon our mind and that we will follow his footstep until he comes again in the clouds of glory. In his name we pray. Amen.